Finally! What's up everybody? How's it going? My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus channel. In today's video, we are going to be setting up a naturalistic Rachidactylus lichianus vivarium. So today, I'm going to guide you guys through the process of how I made this enclosure. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys own lychees. I feel like they're becoming really popular now, especially with more and more people breeding them. I don't necessarily see the cost of them or value of them going down, but they definitely have become more prevalent in the reptile hobby. So if you own any lichianus geckos, let me know what kinds you have, what localities they are. Say you're a lychee owner and I'll give your comment there a heart. Have you ever considered owning one? Do you have any questions about them? I'd be happy to try and answer them for you. So that's what that comment section's for. Let's start a conversation down there. And as always, please don't forget to thumbs up this video. It helps my channel. Yeah, let's get right into the tutorial. Hope you guys are gonna enjoy. Now, before we get too far into today's video, a company called Levoa or Levoi has graciously sent me a free air purifier to review. This is not a paid partnership or sponsorship for this video. They just wanted to send me the product, see if I like it, and recommend it to you guys as my viewers. Recently, I've really come to appreciate and understand the importance of having clean and pure air in your animal room or in your home at large. You see, when you're keeping this many animals or having a large family of animals, it's important to provide pure air for them. You're constantly moving substrate, there's dust, dander from certain types of pets, and these types of products can really make a big difference in the quality of air that you're breathing in, but also that your animals are breathing in. So I actually have a few air purifiers running in my home currently, and I'm eager to show you guys this one. There will be a link in the comment section down below if you guys would like to check out this product and potentially order one for yourself. So guys, this is the beautiful and elegant Levoi HEPA air purifier. This is the Core 300 model that they sent me. One of the things I love about this product that I've come to see here in the instructions is that you actually have a sleep mode. There's a fan speed button to select the speed that you want the fan running. You even have timers so you can set it on for intervals if you're gonna leave the house or your home for a while but you want it on for let's say four hours. You can do that. So what's cool is it actually uses a three-stage filtration system. There's a pre-filter which removes all your dust particles and such, a advanced true HEPA filter, and then the air that's able to pass through that is then passed through a activated carbon filter which removes impurities, really helps reduce odor of the air passing through and just gives that air passing through the top fan that finishing touch of freshness. So all around really awesome air purifier. Thank you again, Levoy. Really appreciate the air purifier. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do here is glue in our cork background here. It looks fantastic. It's a simple, easy way to do it that's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg. So what you wanna do is use some S1 silicone and you know, layer it and just make sure you get all different sides, corners, put a big glob all over the place and gently but firmly press the cork tile onto the glass. If you can't even put some heavy books on it or something to hold it in place and then give it at least 24 hours to cure properly before moving on to the next steps. All right guys, so we now have our cork tile background in place. It's time to take things to the next level here. We are going to be putting in the hydroton balls, which are gonna go into the bottom here and provide a drainage layer. Real quick recap, the necessity and need of the drainage layer as seen here with some of my Fantasticus enclosures and my fantastic little reflection. What this allows is for your excess water in the enclosure to drain through the substrate and flow into the hydroton as opposed to saturating your substrate, getting it soggy and waterlogged with anaerobic bacteria, which is the last thing you want. It's bad for the plants, it can cause root rotting, etc. So by having this drainage layer and mesh between your substrate and the drainage layer, to keep it from mixing, you can keep proper drainage. Now what I've done here is filled a large container full of it. Uh, this has been pre-rinsed already because Hydroton is super dusty. Uh, it's very abrasive towards itself, so when it comes in the large bags, you can imagine it's gonna produce a lot of dust. Now this has had probably almost a day to dry already, so it might start doing the same thing, 
but rest assured this has been washed and uh, hopefully it's enough for our small drainage layer we want to have at the bottom of this enclosure. Alright, so now what we want to do is just spread it all out. Make sure that it's evenly distributed along the bottom of the enclosure. Alright, so you can see that that's perfect because again, we don't want it to be too high. It gives us a few good inches of substrate line there to have for soil in the enclosure. Keeping in mind that this isn't going to be some sort of perfect bioactive enclosure. This will meet our needs just fine. Alright, now that our drainage layer is in, we are going to put in our fiberglass screening, which you can easily buy at a hardware store. It's literally just like a mosquito screen uh, replacement kit. Fiberglass screen repair kit. Yeah, we're just gonna take these off and quite literally cut a piece that fits the dimensions of this tank here, lay it down, and then we can move on to placing the substrate in there. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, now that our drainage screen is cut, which if I do say so myself, I'm pretty proud of my guesstimation measurement. Pretty solid. We're gonna lay that down. I have the extra piece that I will fit over. See? area, cover the spots that I missed, and then we can go ahead and add our plant. But, so guys, here's the dilemma. I knew for a while that I wanted to create a naturalistic vivarium for my Lichianus geckos. I know that Leela is going to be laying eggs in the substrate and it'll be a little trickier to find them. That's a risk I'm willing to take. The problem with Lichianus is that they're heavy bodied animals and frankly speaking they will trample and destroy just about any plant you put into the enclosure. That being said, I'm going to kind of give this enclosure naturalistic vibe while not making it fully bioactive. What I mean to say is I've chosen a plant species I think will do well in the enclosure, but I'm going to keep it confined to a pot in the enclosure so it's easy to tear apart if things don't work out, or also just so that they're not going to be up and in there as much. It kind of gives it more stability. It has the illusion of being naturalistic. It'll have most of the benefits of being naturalistic. The beauty, the plants will thrive. There'll be good light. The humidity will be adequate and maintained easily but it's not gonna be fully bioactive and you really can't do that with a Lichianus. You have to remember that these animals are large bodied and produce a lot of waste. Part of the definition of creating a naturalistic or fully bioactive ovarium is that you're usually not gonna have to remove much excrement or waste from the enclosure. That just can't be the case with these animals because they literally paint the glass walls with feces, their poos are large. Unless you have some huge colony of isopods in that enclosure that are going to be consuming and breaking down waste, it's really not feasible. Not to mention having that many isopods in the enclosure poses a huge risk to eggs if you're keeping a pair in there. They will probably try to eat the lychee eggs for the calcium, so we're not even gonna go there. I'm gonna still be manually getting in there and cleaning, but I just want a few plants. I wanna try this again. The last time I tried having plants in their enclosure, it was a Dracaena Janet Craig, and it took them maybe the better part of a month to ruin it, tear leaves off, bend it, damage it, you name it. It didn't work. So, what we're gonna use today is this lovely Sansevieria, or snake plant, it's a hardy plant, it's drought tolerant, so it doesn't need to be watered constantly. It has firm, rigid leaves, waxy coated, perfect option to give this another whirl. What I'm going to do, as I said, is leave it in its pot. So we're going to take away some of our drainage layer and actually situate it above it. Now the drainage layer is good to have, but realistically we're never going to run into an issue with lychees being overwatered. What I'll probably do once in a while is pour water into it systematically, so that's how it'll be watering the plant. The rest of the residual water, if anything is left, will evaporate up into the substrate, maintaining the adequate moisture. Lychees do not like to be kept particularly wet. You can actually keep the humidity a bit lower than you would for crested gecko, because they're prone to getting foot infections on their toe pads where the lamellae is. So look, beep, 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 beep. 
and you do not want that. So the essential point to take away from it is don't let your substrate sit around too moist all the time. You know, let it dry out at the surface, spray them just enough that it evaporates over time, and you'll have some happy, healthy lychees here. So let's go ahead and nestle this pot into the enclosure. This Sansevieria has been grown for the better part of a month in a separate enclosure and spray down continuously to wash off and remove any potential pesticides on the plant. So we should be good to place it in there now. Now, before we get too ahead of ourselves, I want to start scaping things. So we have our cork panels here. Some of them need to be a bit sprayed down because there's poop on them from Jabba and Lila. But here's one of their favorite cork hollows. It's definitely going to be a corner piece here. I just want to make sure that taking into account there'll be substrate, that this obviously fits up against the lid. We don't want to run into any issues there. However, that being said, we may actually want to have it placed here so that we can account for the possibility that Leela will use the bottom of this tube to lay her eggs, which would be super cool. Let's go ahead and sort of plan out the pièce de résistance, as I always say. I think we're gonna go ahead and set it up like this. I really like this layout and I think it'll suit them well. Looks pretty sweet. All right guys, now that the hardscape layout is sort of decided, I took it upon myself to cut a slit with a circular side in the background so that we can sort of loosely come along here and fit the drainage layer around the Sansevieria. All right, let's get our soil mix ready. All right guys, so for the soil mix, what I did is I literally took some peat moss, a little bit of the Zilla Jungle Mix, which is my favorite commercial blend for substrates on the market, hands down, and some organic black earth, Exoterra Forest Moss, and a little bit of the Zumed Cypress Mulch as well. So we just took these, blended them together to get our kind of fluffy, spongy soil. Um, a bit of chunks of bark, add some pockets of aeration that break down over time. And what you could do to this to just make it that much better is add some horticultural charcoal or carbon. That would make a big difference because you have these big pieces of uh, that in there and it would just kind of add more aeration, help prevent bacterial growth. But again, this is not a true bioactive enclosure so we're not really concerned with that. We just want something that's gonna hold humidity well, create receptivity as far as egg laying goes, and this is just that. This is perfect. Let's go ahead and fill the enclosure up with some substrate. All right, so we're just gently making sure that every side here gets well covered. Alright guys, so our substrate is in the enclosure, everything there is ready, so let's go ahead and get the cork bark back in here using the layout that we had previously decided. Alright guys, so we're gonna get that big centerpiece back in here. Perfect. That's definitely stable there. Sansevieria is okay. I'm okay with that look. I think that looks fantastic. Definitely happy with that. Lots of good options for the lychees to hide. We have our nice cork hollow here that they can go in. Hopefully 
Lila will utilize this for laying a nice piece here as well. Cross section coming down. Well, let's figure out where we want to keep our water dish and food dish next. All right guys, things are looking pretty solid here. So let's go ahead and get our water dish in here. I'm gonna keep it just here between the logs so it's easy access down from every piece of cork for the animals. So all we're gonna do is take some reverse osmosis water here and fill the dish up. So the enclosure is coming together quite nicely behind me. You can see here, um, the layout looks fantastic, everything's ready. What I want to take some time to do quickly is give everything in here a good spray down. Just kind of like freshen it up, elevate the humidity since the substrate has dried out a little bit overnight in the time that I've been making this enclosure. So let's go ahead and do that now, spray down the Sansevieria, area. And then with the remaining water in the spray bottle, I'm actually going to do with it is pour it down into one corner of the substrate so it runs down into the drainage layer providing some additional relative humidity that will eventually come up through the substrate and sort of invigorate the humidity index in this enclosure. Well guys, I don't know about you, but if you ask me, I'd say that enclosure is just about ready for Jabba and Leela, so let's go ahead and put them in there. Oh, look who we have here. Here's Jabba and Leela, guys. Time to put them into the new enclosure. Let's go ahead and do that now. Yes, Jabba's already excited to go in there, aren't you, buddy? All right, everybody, so there's Jabba there. And uh, here's Leela, so this is really exciting. Let's go ahead and put them into the enclosure and see how they how they like it. Go ahead, girl. That's, that's your new home. You wanna go for it? You like it in there? I don't know if she can make up her mind. Like your new home, Leela? She's just hanging out there. All right, Jabba, you ready to go in there, buddy? Hey, bud. Go for it. That's your new home, man. Okay, he's just like, I'm headed to the back. Yeah, bud, that's you. That's your home. Go for it. Make yourself put on there. <laughs> oh, nice. He's already going through there. Buddy, what you doing? He's just on, he's like a man on a mission. He's already like, this is already my place. I've lived here for a few months. I see he's going in the shed. He's quite pale there, but that's one happy Luigi. Um, all right, well, I think I'm gonna just let them do their thing from here on in. Should be good. Ah, she found the cork hollow. And it looks like Jabba's about to as well. There we go. That's one lychee in the cork. And here comes Jabba. Well guys, there you have it. I hope you really enjoyed watching this video tutorial on how to set up a more naturalistic Rachodactylus lychianus enclosure. It's super nice to be able to set up something a bit more elegant as opposed to simple and practical because again, these animals 
do kind of bulldoze and trash their enclosures. We'll see how this goes. I'll give you guys updates, of course, and uh, yeah, hoping they like that new enclosure because it sure seems like it so far. All right, and if you're not yet, please don't forget to consider subscribing down below and ding the notification bell to know when my next video comes out. My name is Dion, you're watching Reptiliatus, and as always, I look forward to seeing you guys in another video again soon. Thanks for watching. And if you want to watch more videos about geckos, I'm going to be adding a few playlists here that you can check out some more cool content on geckos if you like watching videos about them.